We clear his poor boys like blowhole. To business news now, and Schiffer Blenheim has the latest. Schiffer, thanks, Brunchies. And the business world is still waiting to hear from former Anglo-Irish thieves boss Sean Fitzborrowings. Mr. Fitzborrowings is refusing to appear in front of the Dáil Committee on Regulated Thievery to explain loans of two trillion euro to him by Anglo-Irish and by Irish Life and Parliament. Mr. Fitzborrowings' spokesman Andy Coverett is on the line now. Andy, why won't Mr. Fitzborrowings appear before the Dáil Committee? No, Martini. Oh, sorry. Um, well, Schaefer, Mr. Fitzborrowings has been advised by his lawyers not to appear before the committee to answer questions publicly, as this would mean that everyone would know what had happened. But come on now, Andy. Surely, as taxpayers who now own this bank, we are entitled to hear the truth about these dodgy dealings. Well, we feel that the Irish taxpayer doesn't know much right now, and that therefore this isn't hurting them, and they can go and get fact. It's common practice in the world of regulated thievery for many millions to be moved around in this fashion. Sure, <laughs> I myself hid the last egg for my three-year-old daughter at breakfast this morning. It's doggy dog. Doesn't this give rise to understandable concern that there was wrongdoing by Anglo-Irish thievery and by Mr. Fitz borrowings, which has been covered up? <laughs> well, duh, Shafra. Do you think? Listen. At the end of the day, I think that your listeners appreciate that in banking, just like in real life, there are some things that nobody should be asked to do. And frankly, spending more than a few seconds in the same room as Shane Ross is one of them. And that was Andy Coverett speaking on his phone from Antigua this morning. In other news, early trading on the Irish Magic Bean Exchange this morning again saw heavy losses in Irish thievery stocks, following the downgrading of Ireland to pretty much fucked by the influential knackered and poor. People of Ireland, there will be no shopping today because of the emergency. And next we have more questions than answers with your stand-in host. Dave Fanning. Yeah, what can I say except to say that I got the gig to interview our next guest. Described by some as the latter-day Nostradamus of economics, by others as the Jay Goody of political commentary. Liked and loathed in equal measures. Well, maybe not that equal now that I think about it. Ginger Mac irritated an economist. Where's it all going next? Uncertainty is spreading like a virus in a crash. We're a highfalutin, property-obsessed transit nation without an arse in our pants. We're a globalised tribe who need to leave the EU right now and chart our own course. Okay, Ginger, but you've got to be smugly enjoying this meltdown more than anyone else out there, because let's face it, you've been predicting the whole thing was going to happen for the last 15 years, and now it's happened. You're creaming it with TV appearances, books, live shows and the like, and probably make more money than you ever did in your life before. Yes, well, we've all got to turn crisis into opportunity. We are the new expectoracy. Well, I am anyway. Okay, okay, enough of that bollocks, Ginger. Just tell us about your new show. Is it together? Is it like, you know, full of irritating little nicknames for hard-working people? Who are the latest Decklanders, Robo Paddies and Breakfast Row men that you're picking on? Well, this current state of social indigestion has certainly created a few interesting new subgroups to slag off. Irish workers are losing their jobs at an unprecedented rate. As an overall group, I like to call the newly unemployed Dole Q Dicks. Right, yeah, very clever. So you're picking on the unemployed and kicking them while they're down, yeah? Exactly. Well, it sounds like you've really captured the mood of the nation there, and I'm sure anyone out there who's unemployed would just love if I gave out your address so they can send you a bit of fan mail. Oh, yes, absolutely. And because there's so many dull Q dicks, I've divided this subgroup into further subgroups, like the 1900 Limerick workers who lost their jobs in Dell. I'm smugly calling them Dell's Angels. Dell's Angels? Uh, why is that? <laughs> because they've got more chance of growing a pair of wings out of their backs than ever getting another IT job in Limerick. <laughs> Profound or whatever. But wait for this one, Paddy. This is the best. You know all those financial services guys who spent December wolfing down 16-ounce fillets in Shanahan's on the green. Now they're at home on their couches watching schoolboy rugby on Satanta. <laughs> and all they can afford for lunch is a bag of potato, a bottle of Cadet, and a macaroon bar. What the hell is a macaroon bar? <laughs> Talk about boom to bust. This is just great stuff. There's loads of them out there, shitting the pants of their 1,200 euro suits about how they're going to pay next month's mortgage. <laughs> and I like to call these losers slump dogs in despair. And to all of you slump dogs out there, I'm not saying I told you so, but I did. I've been telling you for years and no one listened. But who's right now? Yeah, Ginger, but even a broken clock is right every 12 hours. Anyway, thanks for coming in, I suppose. Yes, thank you, you nasally irritating pain in the arse. The name's Vanny, actually. Yes, but I like to call you a nasally irritating pain in the arse. Watch it, mate. I know Bono. Oh, right. On legal advice, we cannot release the names of the so-called 
golden circle for fear of <laughs> damaging the reputation of Irish banking abroad. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I have a question for the house. I have a question for the house. It's Sal. Now I've heard there was a secret hoard that Shawnee played while the rest ignored. But you don't really care for Anglo, do you, Tishik? We wear them all in the way. The dominoes are standing set. Each bank has vaults of toxic debt. But baffled Biffo, he doesn't have a clue here. Not a clue, yeah. What to do, yeah. Bank rescue, yeah. Oh, oh. He'll push through. Oh, oh. oh, yeah. Our jobs and pensions, they're no more. Our earnings going through the floor. Oh, but we must all bail out Shady Sean's casino. In Galway tents, in summer rain, the fat cats greased your gravy train. And now you're going to save them all in lieu, yeah. All in lieu, yeah. Cause they blew, yeah. Out of view, yeah. Deja vu. You're not the only one in Dole that can sing your fat bollocks. That's totally on call, we're not totally out of order. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, the price. We're coming to that. Tishik, we've been here before. Charlie rode us like a whore for oh so many years before we even knew you. Then Bertie let the money flow. He let the builders build and the bubble grow. Then left you in the shits and bid adieu, yeah. Well, I'm stop all this throw anyway, I'm bid adieu, yeah. Off he flew, yeah. Shafted you, yeah. Well, don't worry. Quite a coup. Yeah. You did your best, and it wasn't much. You rode us barebacked with your cuts. You flushed the feckin' country. Down the loo, yeah. And even though it all went wrong, a hefty pensions, your swan song, when the voters finally get the chance to do, yeah. Chance to do, yeah. We'll subdue, yeah. Bleeding Lula. Gobshite fool. Cutting your own pension, this is any year, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, on lead guitar, former Finnegill Tishon, Garrett Fitzgerald. Hey, thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank Pat Rabbit on percussion, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for him. Unfortunately, we couldn't get anybody else but Trevor Sargent to play the bass, but there you go. Mary Harney is the auditorium. Goody chico paco buco buco so. Hallelujah. When we do you. Oh, we'll all sing hallelujah. When we get rid of you. Yeah. I tell you one thing, don't give up the day job, Deputy Kenny. The number three bus will be running five minutes late today because of the emergency.